John, first of all, the SPFL seemed quick off the mark in their media statement in response to the Rangers dossier. Why do you think that was? I think you'd, <laughs> you'd have to ask them why they were so quick. I mean, I've even heard people saying, you know, they do have this tendency to come out swinging. I think if you go back, it, that there, there were words and actions all along from day one, and this has been pointed out by media people in particular. From day one, it's been nothing to see here, move along. And I think it's in that sort of uh, spirit, that genre, if you like, that they've moved to say, to try and shut it down and actually to discredit it very quickly. I, I found myself quite puzzled. How is it that they couldn't find some, an email to them uh, at the time of the infamous uh, uh, changing of the, of the vote? They couldn't find a, said, a certain email to them uh, for hours, but within minutes of this uh, report, this evidence going out, they were coming out, uh, to use other people's words, swinging. Uh, I think it was a, a clear attempt to try and discredit the evidence without even looking at it properly. The SPFL talked about it being, quotes, a month since Rangers accused the SPFL of bullying and corruption. At last, they have issued their dossier. Why did Rangers take that time? Again, a, a supreme irony, I think, when you look at that. Who set the timeline? Rangers did not set the timeline here. That, you, you need to be really clear about this. Who set the timeline? Rangers from day one followed due process. We didn't call the date of the AGM. We asked for an independent investigation. Of course, they said no. They tried their, uh, their own one, uh, their, their very limited scope investigation. You've had self-administered Q&A, for goodness sake, by, 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 by the chairman of the organization. We have, with good time, uh, ahead of that, uh, within good time, ahead of that EGM, we have presented the evidence to the clubs, not hours before a vote, uh, but, but days before a vote. We followed due process, and it's a process and a timeline that they, uh, that they set out. People talk of a, a smoking gun. What do you make of that? Well, again, I think that uh, this actually comes back to the timeline thing. If you actually look at the, the several weeks, you know, I, I think I saw a reference that by the SPFL in their latest sort of... Uh, move along statement. Um, you know, there's no smoking gun. Finally, Rangers uh, uh, released their, their dossier. Um, that to me is, is, is again, classic but cynical tactics to me. And that is, you've, you had this several week uh, uh, vacuum, if you like, time, time void, if you like, created by their timeline, by what they asked us to do uh, and the other clubs, incidentally. They've sought to fill that void by coming up, and this is a really important point, by coming up with words like smoking gun, by coming out with uh, Rangers uh, allege bullying, bullying and coercion, Rangers did not from day one allege those things. Rangers received reports of such things, and I believe they've even been reported to the CEO of the SPFL himself. So you create this timeline, you create a several week timeline as the SPFL that Rangers and the other requisitioners have to follow. We follow that due process. You then fill that, 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 that time, that void, by what was, let's face it, a quite an orchestrated media campaign over the last week or two. And you get in there words and slogans. I, I actually see it as sloganeering and electioneering. That's what, what's going on here. Sloganeering and electioneering by the SPFL uh, with those kind of words, the smoking gun, etc., etc. Rangers have been consistent. We wanted to present evidence Evidence that asks serious questions, questions that we're not alone in putting, and the right people and the right forum to answer those questions and independent investigation. Why do you think this is seen as Rangers versus the SPFL? Very convenient, very easy, uh, I think, and very cynical once again by the SPFL to isolate Rangers. Again, I think it's been a concerted attempt to isolate Rangers. Uh, some people have said, oh, they're playing the big bad Rangers card. I think it's, it's, it's kind of easy to do that. It's unimaginative, but it's, it's easy to do that. Um, isolate Rangers. Uh, it probably makes life a bit easier for them, and it probably makes them think they can win whatever they think they're going to win in all of this, i.e. people's votes or, or people's hearts and minds in all of this. Um, but uh, I do think many, many people see through it, actually. This was never about Rangers versus the SPFL. Let's be clear on that. This was about Rangers, other clubs, many people asking questions, as somebody put it very well in the media actually, attempting to shine a light on what goes on uh, in the governing body. And to me that's a light that you, you can see it, it's very, very clear now. It's a light that's unwelcome. 
they've made it very clear they don't like that light being shone upon them. That's all, all Rangers have been trying to do with other clubs. And if it takes us to lead that, and we've actually had a number, a good number of clubs saying, you need to lead it, you need to lead it. Well, then we will lead it. We will not stop asking the questions. The SPFL have also accused Douglas Park of threatening Neil Doncaster. Do you have any comment to make on that? I spoke with Douglas and uh, look, again, I, I, he has assured me and I think he'll assure anybody that's willing to, 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 to listen. Um, that did not happen. My firm understanding has been clear since day one, since that, since that Friday, in fact. He tried to engage with the CEO of the SPFL. The CEO refused to engage. Um, and then Douglas and, and Rangers, we, we heard from the legal advisor uh, 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 of, of the SPFL. So um, that is a very different version of events. It's the first time you know, I've heard of Douglas threatening uh, the CEO of the SPFL. Uh, I don't think that's Douglas's style, and, and I certainly don't think it happened. There was also a, a suggestion that Stuart Robertson had ducked out of a, a meeting. What would you say to, to that, John? Yeah, you know, I think that was, again, a, a very cynical uh, suggestion. Uh, my understanding is, is quite rightly and quite understandably, Stuart, having been given very short notice. Now, my, my understanding, incidentally, is that the executive of the SPFL, now this is my understanding, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but the executive of the SPFL, I've never heard of this in my life before, can call such a meeting at very, very short notice. Now, let's please think together of the importance of what we're talking about right now, this whole episode. If you're Stuart Robertson and you're going into that meeting and you're given, frankly, minutes or hours at most uh, ahead of that meeting, uh, is it any wonder Stuart takes some legal advice? And is it any wonder that Stuart's given the legal advice that, that frankly, and I'm a layman, I'll give you it in layman's terms, seems to be, it's so loaded against you. This, this, and I actually even heard the word witch hunt. This is what this is designed to do. If that's the case, it's actually appalling. And Stuart's the last guy who should be called out for, uh, for refusing, quite rightly refusing, especially at such ridiculous short notice, refusing to attend. Fellow SPFL clubs will spend the, the weekend having a look over the information. What message would you have to them? I think I'd have a very clear message. You know, despite, I mean, they have been uh, strong and consistent attempts to isolate Rangers, to make this all about Rangers versus the SPFL. Again, cynical but damn obvious attempts to do that. This has never, ever been about Rangers uh, versus the SPFL. This is about the governance of the SPFL, of our national games ruling body. And, you know, the, 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 the people that the clubs have to ask questions of ultimately, right now, as they go into this weekend, are themselves. Ask yourself the question, is this the best that we can do? Those individuals that, we, that, that are, are said to be running our game ahead of a season that, that, that is... There's so much uncertainty, one of which is we don't even have a sponsor, for goodness sake. So are these really the individuals, the best in class? Because you need to be best in class. Are these the best in class? Is this the best that we can do? Are these the individuals that you have trust in, faith in, confidence in, to lead our game and take it forward? Ask yourself that. It's up to the clubs to provide the answers, not Rangers.